Hi everyone, I'm Les. And I'm Ashley. And you're listening to Anthropotamus, where we explore some of your favorite anthropology topics. Hi everyone, welcome to the latest episode of Anthropotamus. We're here with Dr. Eugene Hutgavigis from Vitatis Spagnus University. Yay, I said it. Uh, Welcome. Thank you so much for being on our show today. He's discussing his recent article, Evangelical Transformation, which was a great article. And thank you so much for being on the show with us today. Mm-hmm. Um, so before we dive into the actual article, uh, you bring up a little bit about your own history, um, about growing up in an anti-religious propaganda environment but in a very religious family. Um, Can you discuss that a little bit with our listeners? And also, are there any specific moments or memories you have in your childhood that maybe influenced your research or your current faith? Uh, Yes, but maybe not so directly. Uh, And as a child, I was experiencing the double socialization Uh, which I mentioned in my article. And on the one hand, my mom organized my religious Catholic education. Uh, On the other hand, uh, the school was ridiculing and mocking religion. Uh, For example, some teachers used to go to the church and then publicly report in the school uh, which children they had seen there. So it was a the atmosphere uh, in that period, yeah. And, uh, actually, uh, when I was a teenager, I started to hate both institutions, uh, the church and the state. But this was a part of, of my own life and many people, uh, other people's life. And <clears throat> it later sparked, I think, a research interest in uh, in the subject. And as, as I started to research religious communities, the basics of Christianity were familiar to me, and it made the uh, easier integration into my research field. Yeah, but, but in general, I wouldn't say that there is one thing or or a moment that stuck with me. It was more like a situation in general. So in your article, you know, you you focus on the eternally displaced refugee Baptists in Ukraine um, and how they, and the interpretation of the reality by using the Bible to create this three-dimensional perspective. Um, can you first explain to our listeners what um, the first two perspectives of time and space? And then um, before looking into the third dimension, which involves incorporating Bible into current events. Uh, regarding time and space, I developed my theory of three-dimensional reality because I wanted to engage in the discussion about how various people comprehend the world. Yeah, so and one thing is how we navigate time. Yeah, if, if you look at our part of the world, we put much effort into measuring time with clocks and calendars, uh, which help us navigate in the world. Uh, and the other dimension we have in common uh, is that we must comprehend space. It can be the space around us, uh, but also our comprehend- comprehension of our city our country, uh, our borders, and the geographical setup of of the world in general. And these two dimensions greatly influence our concept of reality. And my outline of the two dimensions is a bit simplified, but my aim was to show how people from uh, the Baptist communities I studied had an additional way of comprehending uh, of orient, uh, uh, orienting themselves in the world through what I call the third dimension of, of reality. So my approach was to analyze how 
believers start to perceive the world as not only consisting of space and linear time, but link these two dimensions together for the realm of the unseen and eternal. And this realm becomes a third dimension in their worldview. And I call this three-dimensional perception of reality and define this concept as the believer's ability to incorporate narratives and symbols from the Bible into very everyday life and interpret both personal stories and global events accordingly. Yeah, so uh, they live in the same space and time as their fellow citizens, but are able to intertwine the third dimension into the first two. And uh, uh, I can add that my aim was also partly ideological. Uh, I often meet the opinion that believers are naive or have a simplified comprehension of the world, but I can confirm that, that the Baptists from my field have a very sophisticated and complex system of understanding uh, the world. That's, um, I mean, my, my understanding of religion is limited just because my upbringing wasn't specifically religious. However, there were parts of my family that were very religious. Um, Ashley's familiar with some of the different uh, influences that, uh, that I, I went through. So um, I can understand how the, how religion itself can be incorporated into life and make a very complex um understanding of the world just through you know day-to-day -day interactions it doesn't necessarily mean that you're uh any simpler it just it's an extra element that you layer into your current schemata my um uh, my question right now though is do you think it would be possible and this might be uh i don't want to be reductive here but i'm going to try to say this as well as i can do you think it would be possible for somebody to do this same three-dimensional layering of reality with a, another work whether it's you know fiction or um whether it's history or something else like that the the topic doesn't necessarily matter as long as you perceive it as true that if that makes any sense now does does the material itself make a difference into whether or not somebody could create a that this three-dimensional reality yeah i think it's possible it's, it's yeah because it's uh, it's a characteristic of human beings you know it's it, what i wanted to say uh, as well as we don't do not need the substance for constructing our understanding and and the perception and comprehension of reality our brain is able to to make it to make it uh, comprehensible and if it makes sense and yeah i think it's it's possible that uh, why there are so many people who are believe in in so many stuff and they live mm -hmm. in their own world constructed and and yeah so so my answer is yes i think it's possible okay so as a follow-up um do you think this is what's happening with a lot of modern scientists the way they incorporate their scientific viewpoints into their own reality uh that's a good question uh I'm afraid it's more two-dimensional reality, though, because it's, <laughs> it's, it's like a linear, you know, uh, question and answer. It's the way we are understanding what is rational and what is not. So, mm, well, science. It's, Science itself mm -hmm. is a uh, good observation and, and, you know, recording the observations. 
But I think that what I've seen in many modern scientists is a tendency to fall back on the material they've read on places like Anthrosaurus or other peer-reviewed journals instead of um, going directly to what's happening and just using yeah. science where a lot of times they just lean on what they've read. Yeah, and you remind me Cliff of Geertz, very famous uh, symbolic systems yeah and he counted uh, scientific symbolic system religious symbolic system and uh, art uh, if i if i am correct art so pe those people live in somehow different realities from uh, com commonsensical realities so uh, a bit in different worlds <laughs> yeah but yeah it's a uh, provocative question and i don't know we have to research that. it's a question i think it needs to be uh needs to be asked if we don't yeah. examine ourselves then we're blind to our flaws yeah but I mean, as a scientist i, I uh, sorry as a scientist myself or scholar uh, myself i have to admit that there are two quite different languages and my when I speak in, in terms of uh, anthropological um, jargon or concepts, it's much more simple than, than, than I approach their world mm -hmm. and understanding of it. That, that's, maybe that's why I mm, opposed you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no worries. Yeah. I, I appreciate but, your answer to that question. That, that's very interesting, actually. That, so it's, it's, it's a good point. I could see where you're both coming from because I've read articles that reference somebody's research and then I go and look up the original research and I'm like, that is not what I read. Where did you get that from? But at the same time, when you, in your own article, you mentioned the person who was drug addict and then you having the four friends help them. I feel like to manipulate that story to fit their own experience was much more complex than somebody just, you know, I guess reading certain, I guess, misinterpreting someone else's research. Well, see, I wasn't talking about misinterpreting research. Uh, I don't I'm... say misinterpreting, but I'm saying you're taking someone's research to try to fit it into your what your already biased perception of something is. Well, then we go into confirmation bias. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have another question, Ash? Yes. Um, so this article really reminded me of, um, you know, growing up, at least in American culture, we say things happen for a reason. Um, would you say that this perception of events is similar to the way Ukrainian Baptists perceive the world in order to accept and deal with bad events they have experienced? Uh, it's a good thing, and I think it fits all people, not only Americans, actually. But to me, the thing that things happen for a reason is working on different premises than the three-dimensional reality. Uh, it is one of the most basic ways to react when something bad or unpleasant happens to us. Yeah? We immediately look for an explanation as to why this happened. Yeah, and I would say it's more two-dimensional way of comprehending the world because it's only applied in certain moments. Yeah? Uh, and, uh, the Baptists, however, build the entire worldview on the understanding that the things you experience now are intertwined with events, uh, stories from the Bible, like the biblical stories repeat themselves endlessly. And, and this is applied, applied to their lives every day, for good times and uh, as well as bad times. So, so when we, they witness about their traumatic experiences of the war, an entire belief system is already in place again. And for them, it's not only uh, that things happen for a reason, but they are able to find the reason through the Bible. So uh, they do not need any 
intervention from the side of of clinician, yeah, psychiatrist or psychoanalyst, in order to explain their why how to live further after their losses. Yeah, they they found they find their explanation by reading the Bible, by by socializing, by talking about it, by finding you know, some okay. personal reasons of, of that. Yeah, like. So, in essence, they they use the uh, the stories of the Bible and the um, their understanding of the world in that way as a sort of therapy. I think. Yeah, if we need to use that particular world, word, uh, actually, the 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 world is is based not on the human's plan, yeah, but it's based on on God's plan mm -hmm. and human can act in, can understand and act as uh, participants in God's plan. Yeah, and so for doing that, you have to understand what is the plan and for, oh, I, I forgot the name I gave to, to the, the person. <laughs> I, I remember <laughs> them by real name. So I-, I, 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 I I'll be looking uh, him up later for sure. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, he says it's it's the same like in the Bible. Yeah, you, you can read it's the first uh, community in Jerusalem. It was just uh, uh, broken and believers went around the world. It's the same. It's the same. That's that's God's plan, and it repeats itself through the history. So it's not not a linear understanding of time here, yeah, but it's kind of mm -hmm. and yeah. So so in that if if you want it, if we can say it's a therapy, the understanding of the reason, which is higher than than of than they are. Yeah, it's a reason that. Um, that is that was uh, yeah, created made by God and so okay yeah okay uh, so I gotta know you have Valeria says oh the war happened because so that my husband could convert and then you say that to and this is your I, I'm guessing a group of people were just talking at this moment. And then you have another individual who was in this group. You say who you named Tamara, who was shocked by this comment. I think he, I think he even say in the article, her eyes were wide open. She was surprised she said that, but she didn't comment. I'm, I'm just interested to know what Tamara wanted to say. <laughs> did, she, <laughs> did she comment at the end of this discussion to you? <laughs> did you discuss this with her later? Uh, no, I didn't talk with Tamara about that particular event afterwards. Tamara was a well-educated uh, non-believer who came to visit, used to come to visit the community. And so she was not familiar with uh, language, of course. And she was surrounded, surrounded by believers. So, uh, she was a guest, so she did not want to to shout out loud. Yeah, but her eyes said it, it's nonsense. How can you say that? It's nonsense. Uh, uh, so, but yeah, actually, being in the field, it was not so much about her reaction that made an impression on, on me. It was the lack of reaction from the believers side yeah so and this correspond with my previous answer to your uh, uh, Ashley question uh, so Valeria had told us about her husband long journey to conversion and how it only came with the war yeah and for Valeria this was an explanation of her of the personal suffering and losses she had experienced during the war 
the reward can be her husband's conversion. That also means that the third dimensional reality can offer explanation on multiple levels, on global level, on social level, uh, on, on community, local community level, and as well as on personal uh, level at once. Yeah? So her personal explanation does not contradict other explanations of the, of the war. So and uh, as, as every believer, she has her own personal relationship with God. So, so there are multiple ways, and so this this personal relationship uh, is an intimate one, and everyone understood her language and understood her feeling, and showed the respect and the understanding to her personal the, the gift she. Uh, received from God for her suffering, maybe why not? I I think a lot of these different um, uh, social viewpoints it, it relates into the idea of the way people, um, as you as you're raised and as you learn different things from your community, from your family, from these all these other influences, it builds the framework with which you navigate the world. And just considering that everything that we do is translated through our eyes, through our ears, and through our experience in the past. It seems like a pretty natural reaction for people to have that that uh, three-dimensional viewpoint that you were discussing. Um, and what that kind of leads me to is to consider how these communities form, even in the, the times where you're discussing there's so much oppression and there's so much so much pressure trying to push you away from these communities but the reason that they stick together is because they all understand each other they see the world in a way that makes sense and they can communicate effectively whereas somebody from the outside looking in doesn't matter how much sense that world makes to you you've always got a different scheme or a different um, uh, lens through which you view the world so it's going to be a little bit off kilter um like I said, just a comment. It was an interesting article to read, and I really appreciate you coming on our uh, our podcast here. Thank you very much for inviting me. I think it's interesting as you always hear people say religion is a cause of violence in the world or war or hate. Um, but in this example, it's really used for people to get through those things. And it really shows that religion in the end is a tool and how you use it kind of dictates, you know, how you get through life. Very nice yeah. comments. Thank you. Um, well, I, uh, I think that's all of the questions that I have, Ash. That's all I have also. So what are you working on now? What is your current research? On Pentecostals in Lithuania and in Ukraine, so I visited Lviv, uh, two communities, and I uh, I visited uh, uh, Lviv, its a city in in Ukraine, in February for two weeks, and then I spent the whole June, and in June I was was. I started my pilot research on Pentecostal community, as I know a bit about Baptist, so I decided to to switch uh, and learn about Pentecostals. And yeah, it's a very interesting, very conservative community. Uh, and the uh, part of the community uh, was, uh, in prison during the Soviet period. So it's an old person and very, very, as I said, conservative and old fashioned community. Uh, for example, women uh, are sitting in scarves. Yes, they're, they're married women. So it's a very, it's a, an indicator of, of uh, conservatism. And yeah, I enjoyed it and uh, uh, it will be the second part of my article <laughs> because uh, I was asked about the 
the question was about maintaining that three-dimensional reality, how they are support and maintain because it's then you go outside, it's it's easy to lose it here, yeah, to, uh, to lose it for two-dimensional perception. So, yeah, um, okay, <laughs> that's, that's... That what. sounds very interesting. Are you planning to write a book at all on, on the, uh, the subject? Yeah, I'm planning, but I need a bit more data. And, and, of course. Yeah. Course. And will it be in English? <laughs> <laughs> I guess we'll see. Yeah, is is yeah English. <laughs> He's like no. <laughs> that's, why, that's why actually I I started to learn English is because I fell in love to anthropology. So mm -hmm. it was we didn't have anthropology in the Soviet period. It it was a kind of substitute uh, called ethnography. Mm -hmm. Which is which was engaged in kind of folklore research, no politics, no critical thinking, and so on. And then, after the independence, many uh, Lithuanians from the U.S. from Canada came in order to help to build democracy in Lithuania to to teach how to how to to to, to study uh, disciplines. Mm -hmm. So that's so why I fell in love, and that's why I started struggling with <laughs> English in my thirties. So, yeah. Well, you speak very well for somebody who started so recently. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you again for coming on the show. For our listeners, you can find us on YouTube. Uh, anthropotamus.com and various podcasts such as Apple Podcasts and Castbox. Also find us on Instagram and Twitter. See you next time. Bye. Thank you all for listening. Distribution of Anthropotamus is in collaboration with the American Anthropological Association. Please continue to follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Anthropotamus for our latest episodes, show notes, and book discussion schedule.